Hi, this is Jay McClellan, and this video is part three in my Build a Drone series. In the part two video, I built this basic drone and got it flying. And in this part three, I'm going to build a stabilized camera platform for it that uh, has a gimbal stabilization for recording high definition video and also has a first person video transmitter to send back live video while I'm flying. I added some simple legs to the quadcopter frame in order to get it high enough off the ground to clear the camera platform underneath. These legs are a really minimalist design. I just used three zip ties to hold each one on. And at the top of the carbon fiber tube, I filed a little notch so that the top zip tie fits into the notch so that the legs can't come off. It's really simple, really lightweight, and gets the job done. I replaced the original bottom plate of the frame with this new one that I made in my 3D printer. And it has a little stop, sort of a fence in the front and a shorter one in the back so that when I slide the battery in, it rides against the stop in the front and sits quite nicely in the back. So it's fairly stable just sitting there, and just with a small piece of Velcro, I can secure the battery in place, and it should be nice and stable. Here's the underside, and you can see the most important feature of the new base plate, which are these large holes here. These are the holes where I'm going to mount the camera gimbal. Here are all the parts to the video platform. In the center, I have a two-axis camera gimbal. I have this video camera, which will record high definition 1080p video, while at the same time it will output uh, low definition analog video for live first person video transmission. I have a 5 volt power regulator so that I can power the camera off the main flight battery. I have a wiring harness to supply power to the regulator and the other components. This is a small on-screen display unit which will take the analog video from the camera and overlay information such as the flight battery voltage onto it and then output the, co the combined video from there and that goes to the transmitter and so this will send live video back uh, to me while I'm flying that I can receive on a monitor or on goggles to get uh, live video and it'll show me exactly what the camera is recording. The video camera that I'm using is brand labeled by Turnigy, but it's actually the same as an SJ Cam SJ4000. And uh, this is similar to a GoPro, but considerably less expensive. These are under $100. I think the video quality is similar. And aside from recording video, it has a port on the side where it provides uh, analog video output. And that analog video output is what I'm going to feed to my first person video transmitter. The camera has a built-in battery, but I want to keep it charged while I'm in flight. I don't want to rely on that battery solely for the camera power. And so I'm going to use this little 5-volt regulator or battery eliminator circuit to supply 5 volts to the camera from the main flight battery while I'm in flight. Here's the video transmitter I'm going to use to send first-person video back to me while I'm flying. You can find a variety of these by different manufacturers and with different output power levels. Many of them provide a 250 milliwatt power output, which in the United States you can use without a license. Uh, this has a 600 milliwatt power output for which you need an amateur radio operator's license, uh, which I have. So I'm going to be using the slightly higher power output to get a little bit better video signal coming back. Together with the transmitter, I'm going to use this Micro Minim OSD board, or on-screen display board, and this will let me overlay information onto the video that's transmitted back. Initially, I'm just going to show the main flight battery voltage plus my amateur radio call sign uh, so that I can operate the transmitter legally. In the future, I may uh, connect up the communication lines with a flight controller so I can show additional information, uh, such as power levels or GPS information if I add a GPS to the system. On the cable that comes from the main flight battery to the payload section, I put this little row of connectors so that I can plug up to five devices into it to supply battery power to them. And I also added this 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor to help uh, reduce any noise that might be coming from the flight section to give a little bit cleaner power. I still need to insulate this with some shrink wrap. Here's a front view of the camera gimbal so you can see how the camera will sit on it. And on this side of the camera there's a USB connector and from that connector comes the analog video that I need for the video output signal and it also is the place where you connect a 5 volt power supply to keep the camera's battery charged. And I made a, a custom cable for that. You can get a breakout cable that breaks out the video 
but there's a couple of problems with that. Number one, it's quite bulky. And number two, all it provides are connections for the video signals and the power supply. And I also wanted to bring out the USB communication lines. So I just took this connector and soldered on five wires because a micro USB connector has five wires. There are four wires that are the actual USB signals, um, plus five volts, ground, and two communication lines. And then the fifth wire is the video. So I made my own little cable. I still need to insulate the end of it with uh, wires that will go down to the flight section. And so that'll give me a more compact and more flexible way to bring the signals out of the camera. On the other end of that cable, I broke out three connectors. I have uh, plus and minus five volts for powering the camera. I have a USB connection that I can use to communicate with the camera so I can pull files off the memory card directly. I need to also supply five volt power uh, while I'm doing that so because I didn't run the five volt lines into the USB connector. So the camera has to be powered up from another five volt source. But that way I can, I can get the video files out much more easily than trying to pull the card out. And then finally I have two lines coming out for the video signal that will go to the on-screen display board and then to the transmitter. Here's a rear view of the gimbal, and I just lightly stuck on the components with a little bit of tape so I can see how things are going to fit together, and so I can see how much I want to shorten these wires, because many of my wires are way too long, so I'll shorten them down and make it more compact. But uh, So you're looking from the back with this being the top, and I have the camera mounted on the gimbal, and this transmitter will tuck quite neatly right, uh, right in the back of the gimbal. So I'll mount it right there. I'll attach the on-screen display unit to that and those cable together and then I put on the back of here which you can't see on the other side I have the 5 volt regulator that's going to supply power to the camera. I want to make sure that this section of the transmitter is exposed because this is a big heat sink and it does get pretty warm in operation and similarly on the back uh, back here the little 5 volt regulator also needs to be well exposed so it's uh, so it's kept cool and then the uh, the flight section's connector for accessories is right up here, and so I have this cable which I need to shorten to supply the 5 volt power as well as signal lines that are going to run up to the gimbal controller to control the axes from the transmitter. So here's the camera mounted on the gimbal, and I'll go ahead and power up the system. And you can see the camera stabilizes itself on uh, the gimbal stabilizes the camera, and if I tilt the model, the uh, gimbal reacts accordingly to keep the camera nice and level. So that part looks good. And then I have channels 5 and 6 of the receiver wired up to the camera gimbal controller. And so if I switch on the receiver, I have channels 5 and 6 wired to the receiver channels 5 and 6 coming uh, from, the con from the radio controller. I can move channel 5 to tilt the camera up and down, and I can move channel 6 to tilt the camera side to side. Here's a rear view of the gimbal in the final installation, so I have the transmitter mounted here. I have my little on-screen display board mounted here, and tidied up the wires quite a bit. There's still a bit of wires uh, moving around, but at least they're not very long. Here's a side view of the gimbal with camera in front. You can see if I perturb the camera, Gimbal will return it to its center position, and the whole thing is mounted on these shock mounts. Before I go flying, I'm going to put zip ties through these shock mounts because they're just rubber, and uh, in the event of a, of a hard landing, they tend to pop out, and so a zip tie will make sure that the whole assembly stays together. One unfortunate feature of the Turnigy or SJ4000 camera is that every time you power it up, you have to switch it into video mode. And so I'm going to press the power button on the front. And you can see it's a little uh, screen on the back. And uh, if I tap the mode button, which is also the power button, three times that gets me into the menu. You can't see the whole menu because of the strap, but that's okay. I can see enough of it for what I need. And unfortunately, you just have to go through this every time. Switch up to the TV mode option and turn it on. And that will uh, clear the menu on the back then and it will send TV output to the transmitter. 
I have a couple options for receiving the live first-person video from the quadcopter while it's flying. And at least for the first flight, I'm going to use this little monitor. Uh, I have some goggles, some fat chart goggles, and those work okay. But uh, the monitor is actually a little easier to deal with when I also want to be able to look up and see the craft. And when I power it up, I just need to switch the mode into the proper video mode. And now we have live video coming from the quadcopter. So you can see the on-screen display at the top, and I'll pick up the quadcopter. And uh, you get a little tour of my lab by quadcopter. And uh, you can see that if I, if I tilt the copter side to side, the camera stays quite stable. So that much is good. And uh, the gimbal is basically doing its job, unless I go too far. So I'm waving the quadcopter around quite a lot here. Unless I, unless I exceed the limits, uh, it stays quite stable. Then I'll go ahead and switch the transmitter on. And now I can adjust the tilt up and down and side to side from the transmitter. So first person video looks pretty good. And here you're seeing the monitor showing a picture of the monitor uh, shot through the quadcopter. You can see it displays my call sign every now and then. K8DC is my amateur radio call sign so that I'm legal to use the higher powered transmitter. And then it's also displaying the battery voltage of 11.1 .1 volts. The battery isn't, uh, isn't really fully charged at this point, but that's okay. It'll be enough for a first test flight. All right, well, it's time for the first test flight. I've got it all uh, ready to arm. I'm going to arm the camera. I'm going to turn on the recording, and uh, we'll make a fairly short test flight, but we'll fly around a little bit and uh, try to shoot some aerial video. Had a little rough takeoff, but uh, in general, looks pretty good. I was just holding the uh, yaw to yaw stick to the side a little bit when I took off. Okay. Well, all systems look pretty good. Um, our battery voltage is down to about 10.4 volts, so I'm going to have to. Uh, Go ahead and shoot a video. We'll fly up over the vineyard a little bit. Well, with a successful test flight, that about wraps it up. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it flies. I think the uh, the video quality is pretty good, and I'm really happy with the stability uh, offered by the the gimbal for the camera. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and thanks for watching. <laughs>